The spring fire in southern Colorado is now nearly 79,000 acres. If that size remains the official number, it would be in the top five largest wildland fires in state history. As you would expect, windy, dry conditions are to blame for the size growing. Even air tankers and bucket drops are not having their usual effect. Arrest documents suggest the fire was started by a man from Denmark who was cooking meat on an open fire pit. He thought he had put the fire out. We asked fire crews if there's a difference fighting a fire set unintentionally versus on purpose. There's no difference as far as the amount of suppression and effort we give to that. Where the difference may come in is how thorough and how intensive will the investigation be. The investigation portion of it obviously is how we want to track trends, how do these things cause so we can mitigate them or prevent them in the future. And then also to hopefully obtain a subject um, and then get cost recovery out of it. And then, you know, maybe prosecute them to that point. The fire is still just 5% contained. Updates to the acres burn won't be released until later tonight or tomorrow morning. So be cautious when you hear that a fire has blown up overnight. It may have grown all day. The size is only updated every so often. The Weston Pass fire is also still burning. That one is 9,300 acres, 5% contained. Today, we went to the Rocky Mountain Metropolitan Airport where the Jefferson County Air Tanker Base is located. It takes almost a dozen hands to help refuel and load about 3,000 gallons of retardant before taking off. This air tanker here was headed to the Weston Pass fire this afternoon. Now, we like you thoughtful next viewers because we get so many emails a day with ideas and questions. A viewer named Chuck Jones sent us one yesterday with more of a suggestion to use square miles as opposed to acres to explain to viewers how large the fires are. Well, Chuck guessed if you were to ask 10 people in downtown Denver how large an acre is, we'd be lucky if one person was able to answer correctly. So today, we took Chuck's advice. We got a mathematics professor at Metropolitan State University, Denver, to explain wildfire measurements in simpler terms. One square mile contains 640 acres. So it's a pretty big number of acres that fit into one square mile. If 140,000 acres total is burning currently, and if we want to get a sense of how many square miles that is, then 140,000 acres. Uh, just to find out how many square miles, all I need to do is divide by 640 acres per square mile. And so that's about, I can't do this in my head, so I just bust out the old trusty dusty, 140,000 divided by 640. That's about 218.75 square miles. Our next question comes from a lot of you. Jim, Ken, Deborah, Philip, Rebecca all want to know why are fireworks stores and tents still able to sell fireworks when there are so many bans and restrictions in place? Well, Douglas County tells us it receives requests and issues permits for the sale of legal fireworks long before knowing whether or not there will be fire restrictions around the 4th of July, meaning they were OK once, not going to shut them down. Instead, put up this notice, a public notice that basically says the fireworks you're buying may not be allowed to be used. However, Douglas County's Office of Emergency Management points out most of the problems actually come from illegal fireworks likely bought out of state. In Arapahoe and Jefferson counties, the use and sale of fireworks is currently not allowed. In unincorporated Adams County, it is, like at 52nd and Sheridan, where you can buy the kind that don't leave the ground. A lot of our customers will even ask them, ask us, is it legal to fire these in? I said, what, what county are you in? You'll have to check with your county. We tried to explain to them because of the fire bans, we are to be careful. You know, because we live here. This is our state. You know, we don't want it to burn up either. Just like Kathy said, before lighting any fireworks off or even buying them, know the laws and the bans currently in your county. Long story short, if it leaves the ground, it's illegal. And that brings us to a thorny issue that many of you have brought to our attention. You've noticed we have a fireworks ad airing on 9 News. I'll warn you, we checked the commercials log and that fireworks ad is going to air later in next. First, you need to know that news doesn't talk to sales about the ads that air and sales doesn't talk to news about what to put in this newscast. 
The company line is that we're the public airwaves and we provide opportunities for all advertisers and that it would not serve our community if we adopt policies that restrict access only to advertisers we approve. Our airwaves go into Wyoming, so there are people who see our signal who live in areas where fireworks that are sold in Wyoming are legal. And for those who live here and choose to go there for fireworks that are illegal here, don't bring them back and set more of this state on fire. Well, now it's time for our shameless, the more you know ripoff, you should probably know this. One of the perks of a holiday is the free street parking. One of the drawbacks of the start of the month is street sweeping. But holidays trump street sweeping. Denver Public Works tells us there will be no street sweeping on the 4th of July. So the streets missed tomorrow will be swept on July 31st. Cars parked on streets that are swept on the first Wednesdays are in the clear. And cars parked on those streets when they're swept on July 31st also won't get a ticket. Well, the Coors Event Center, where the CU basketball and volleyball teams play, has run dry. Actually, throughout most of its history, you couldn't buy alcohol there. But the point is, it no longer has a name related to alcohol. The Coors name was on the building long before I was a student there, almost 28 years now. In 1989, when CU wanted to build the Dalward Athletic Center attached to Folsom Field, the Adolf Coors Foundation gave $5 million of the $14 million price tag. In return, the Events Center was stamped with the Coors name. Now, CU is trying to sell the naming rights to both the Events Center and, sadly, Folsom Field. Coors is still brewing at 20th and Blake, though. The contract it signed for the naming rights to where the Rockies play, well, that was for life. Three years ago today, a fiery helicopter crash in Frisco led our 9 Wants to Know team to start asking questions. The pilot, Pat Mahaney, died, partially the result of the fire. A flight nurse suffered burns on more than 90% of his skin. The problem with the country's helicopter fleet remains, but changes have come, slowly. Here's investigative reporter Chris Vanderveen with a status report from his Fueling the Fire investigation. At the time, it, like all other Flight for Life AS350 helicopters, had a fuel system in it never capable of surviving anything quite like this. Our Flight for Life helicopter just crashed. Plastic fuel tank just not good enough anymore? No, it is. Plastic fuel tank is not good enough. Here we go. Months ago, Air Method CEO Michael Allen showed me the beginning of his solution, a helicopter by helicopter fuel system retrofit. This was his first. A double-walled, crash-resistant fuel tank. Today, every Flight for Life helicopter in use in Colorado has the same system. Why are you doing it? Because it's the right thing to do for our people. By next year's end, he believes every one of his 150 AS350s in use nationwide will have crash-resistant fuel systems. Oh, I think the efforts of, of you and uh, the professionals at your uh, network uh, and around the, the, the media industry, I think the focus was right. Drop on three, two, one. Earlier this year, the House of Representatives passed an amendment to close a loophole identified in our Fueling the Fire investigation. One of its sponsors credited not just Nine News, but the widow of pilot Patrick Mahaney, who died shortly after the crash. Two people deserve special thanks. Patrick Mahaney's wife, Karen, for her tireless advocacy for safer helicopters, and Chris Vanderveen from KUSA Channel 9 for his diligent reporting about the dangers of these fragile and outdated fuel systems. Representative Perlmutter's office told me Tuesday they hope to see the Senate approve legislation by summer's end, something that would mandate that every new helicopter built in the U.S. today have a crash-resistant fuel system on board. Is there any good reason why a helicopter should be coming off the line today that doesn't have a crash-resistant fuel system? I don't believe there is. Three years later, much has changed, but not the general risk. To date, the Federal Aviation Administration has done nothing to mandate this. In February, another five people burned in a helicopter crash in the Grand Canyon, each a victim of a system that has known for far too long of the problem. For next, this is Chris Vanderveen. To put that story in perspective, the military figured out how to all but eliminate post-crash fires with helicopters in the 1970s. Fireworks and lightning lit up the sky last night. Is Mother Nature going to provide an encore for fireworks shows tonight? Becky will help you plan your night and tomorrow's barbecue. And I sit down with Denver's soon-to-be police chief about a new use of force policy the current chief may leave in his lap. Our officers go out every day with the intent of delivering the best possible public safety services. Next.
thunderstorms in the Denver area right now, but they are outside the city, and we certainly have had some gusty winds from storms that tried to produce some rain. Out to our north and east, we've got a storm producing some small hail and some lightning just to the north of Fort Morgan. In northeast Colorado, a threat for severe weather tonight. Light rain showers and some lightning around a storm that is hovering over Vail in the Continental Divide. Red flag warnings remain in effect in these areas till 8 o'clock tonight. Those gusty thunderstorms playing a big role in the fire danger we have through our foothills, through southern and southeast Colorado and northwest parts of our state. The gusty thunderstorm risk continues into tomorrow. So if you're out and about tomorrow afternoon, we're looking at daytime temperatures at about 89 degrees. That'll be our high with sunshine to start our day by the evening for fireworks displays, gusty thunderstorms and temperatures dropping back into the upper 70s. The best chance for rain that we have this week will be arriving on Thursday, so day after the holiday. That'll also keep temperatures in the middle 80s for highs. After that, we dry out with highs in the low 90s and a gusty thunderstorm or two possible on Friday. Sunshine Saturday and Sunday with highs back in the middle 90s. We still could see a few storms out, uh, uh, out across the metro area, Marshall, once we get into this evening. So everybody who's hitting up those fireworks displays tonight needs to keep that eye to the sky. Becky, good job pushing some of those storms farther down the forecast. That's, that's excellent work. I do, I do what I can. Well, Denver has a new police chief. Actually, the city will have one on Monday when Commander Paul Pazin officially takes over for Chief Robert White. Pazin, who grew up near Jefferson Park, has been in charge of the Northwest Denver's District 1 for six years. We started our talk today about when his dream went from being a police officer to being the police officer's CEO. The culmination of a lifelong dream, uh, you're right, I was uh, born and raised in this city and I feel that it, my purpose in life is to give back to this community, this community that has given me so much and in order to do that, in order to maximize that, you want to climb to the highest levels possible and by leading this department at this level I will be able to help shape and formulate not only our strategies but even the way that our officers interact with the community which is absolutely the most important thing that we can do. There's a current push to get a new use of force policy in place it sounds like before Chief White leaves office. If that's the case, that would be by Monday when you take office. And it sounds like if, let's say, Broncos coach Vance Joseph were to put a new offensive playbook in, then retires and says, hey, new coach, that's your playbook, go with it. Are you comfortable with the policy that's being talked about right now that you would be responsible for fulfilling? So uh, it's critical that we look at all of our policies and, and make sure that our policies are sound moving forward. Uh, our team has focused uh, on this effort for a year and a half, and this has had some community input. It has had input from uh, all levels of city government, and we're going to ensure that it is trained appropriately and implemented appropriately. W what does the policy look like? Uh, the use of force policy? Like is, is it going to be specific? I, I know some of the concerns is that it might leave officers open for interpretation of, I thought this, that's my defense. Marshall, great, great question. And uh, that's exactly what we need to make sure doesn't uh, occur. And we do that by communicating, by training the policy to training to its intent. Uh, our officers go out every day with the intent of delivering the best possible public safety services, not to get into any type of physical confrontation with our community members. And we're going to work towards that by ensuring that the training addresses all of those issues before we send our team out on the street. Tomorrow on Next, soon to be Chief Pazin's plan to cut domestic violence calls by hundreds. And if the deputy chief and commanders that he beat out for the job still have a job. And if you can't wait until then, my full interview with soon to be Chief Pazin is on the next YouTube page. Retirement is not supposed to come with a full-time job, yet Rich is busy directing traffic as hundreds of cars make a wrong turn into his neighborhood on their way to Estes Park. They're asking themselves, I know what they're saying. Honey, is this, is this the way? Yeah, no, it's not. And someone's having a really good week. And we didn't want to wait until Friday for this good news. That's next. How many of us could get where we want to go without relying on this? How many of you follow the voice in your phone no matter where it tells you to go? Arnold Brennan found out about 15 people in a matter of minutes. 
he spots them by their speed. Right about now, because they're slow. <laughs> the, the locals might go up a little quicker. He senses the confusion as each car creeps to a stop. They're asking themselves, I know what they're saying. Honey, is this, is this the way? Yeah, no, it's not. No, this is not the way. Uh, if you're going to Estes Park or Rocky Mountain, do a U-turn. Uh, the maps are wrong, the GPS is wrong. Since last Wednesday. I've just liked to, you know, talk to people, I guess. A retired Rich Triano has been working full time. A greeter. Kind of like a Walmart greeter, but I'm just greeting you to go to Estes Park. He's directed hundreds of tourists away. Left down at the main highway. From a pointless detour to Estes Park. It might be about a mile. The route takes people off US 36, up a dirt road, then back to 36. GPS is wrong, been wrong for 10 days, so do a U turn. People are just following their phones. Look at the Google map, lead us here. I know it does. All right, you be careful. Have a good day. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I knew something was wrong because I've gone to Estes Park a lot. I never remember going up a dirt road. Yeah, I thought this just was like a shortcut or something. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's someone's glitch, but Rich? It's Apple Maps, Google Map. I don't know who's doing it. Is the guy stuck answering questions? I don't mind doing it. I've got the time, and if I could make their day a little bit easier, they're always apologizing to me, and I'm saying, hey, I'm sorry you're following your GPS. At least there's a friendly face. Yeah, be careful. When the voice on your phone lets you down. For next. Thanks, guys. I'm Noel Brennan. Head north toward East Spear. Ooh. I was just going to follow the directions there. Uh, CDOT noticed this problem, too. They spent hours on the phone with people from Apple Maps and will be reaching out to Google. They even put up a sign directing people to continue straight on US 36. So drive a little old school and trust your eyes more than your phone. Now look, I want my food freaky fast, but maybe not by a newbie driver. Kim Christensen saw this today on Wadsworth in Arvada, and we knew we just had to share it. There's a Jimmy John sign on top of the car, but look at the back. Please be patient, student driver. Well, Kim emailed this to the next team and asked, are they double dipping? We're not sure what's going on here, but it's freaky funny. A sign that made a next viewer do a double take and a piece of good news that someone decided to celebrate, so we figured we'd celebrate it too. That's next. It's a sign spotted by next viewer John Riccello. I hope I'm saying that right, from Glenwood Springs. You can get an oil change at a Midas there for the price of a used car. 25 hundo. What kind of oil is up there exactly? John thought it seemed excessive. This might be where punctuation really matters. We're guessing it means to say $24.99, $24.99, but maybe oil is just different in the mountains. If you see a sign that makes you laugh, send it to us. Email nine news, next at 9news.com or get our attention with the hashtag HeyNext. And here's a little good news for Tuesday. No reason other than the fact that it made 9 News photojournalist Chris Hansen and reporter Jordan Chavez smile. They spotted this on I-70 near Idaho Springs this morning, the back of the car window, 7218, cancer-free. That means today is the first day of that person's life without cancer, at least currently without cancer. That's something to celebrate. A few pieces of feedback congratulating Chris Vanderveen on the helicopter explanation. And one says, OMG, you're talking about the Frisco helicopter crash again? Well, as our executive producer of investigations puts it, we'll keep mentioning this story until people stop dying in post-crash fires. Expect that from us next time.